If you look at the breadboard, you see lots of pinholes organized in sets of fives. Let us first distinguish two different types of sections, the power section and the component section. There are four power sections, also known as power rails, two at the edges and two in the middle. There are also four component sections, two here separated by a ravine and another two here also separated by a ravine. By the way, you also notice some letters here and numbers across. These are not really indicative of anything. You can ignore them. They are intended to serve as coordinates for each pinhole, so you can write down how you wire the board instead of taking a picture of it. All right, so let's start with the power sections, which are also known as power rails. These are intended for connecting a power supply to a circuit. Recall that a power supply has a positive end from which the current emanates and a negative end to which the current returns. By the way, the negative end is also referred to as ground. Now, by convention, wires connected to the positive end are red and those connected to ground are black or blue. This is, of course, merely a convention, but it's a pretty common one. That's why you see plus appearing in red here and minus appearing in blue. Now, what characterizes each power rail is that all pinholes in it are internally connected. So these are connected and so are these. So, if you, for example, connected a power supply to one of the pinholes in the positive rail and connected the negative end of the power supply through a wire to the negative power rail, then you have this entire rail being negative and the entire other one being positive. Now, let's look at the component section. This section is intended for inserting loads, LEDs, resistors, etc., and of course also for connecting wires. What characterizes the component section is that each pinholes, each five pinholes in a column, are internally connected. For example, these five are internally connected. Similarly, these five are connected as well as these. All right. Let's recap the board layout. We have power rails connect connected horizontally and we have, okay, let's start again. Let's recap the board layout. There are power rails connected horizontally here and there are component rails connected vertically. If you're curious as to how this connection is actually done, this is what, what's happening behind the scenes. If you look at the back of the board behind the adhesive packing, you will see long metallic strips under the power rails to connect all their pins together and short metallic segments under each five pinholes in the component section to connect them together.